South Korea's intelligence agency reports that North Korea plans to send a second group of military personnel to Russia, totaling up to 10,000 troops. Bloomberg, citing the intelligence agency, stated that the first group, made up of 1,500 elite special forces, is already training in the Russian Far East. Their transport to Vladivostok took place from October the 8th to the 13th. The report also points out that North Korea has sent a lot of weapons to Russia since August 2022. This includes about 8 million shells of 122mm and 152mm sizes, around 100 Hwasong-11 missiles and Bulse-4 anti-tank weapons. North Korean weapons have already been spotted on the battlefield in Ukraine, with South Korean officials noting that these figures are much higher than previous estimates from Europe. After about a month of training at military facilities in Vladivostok, Usurysk, Khabarovsk and Blagoveshchensk, North Korean troops are expected to be sent to the front lines in Ukraine. According to intelligence, Russia plans to provide them with weapons, uniforms and fake documents to disguise them as residents of eastern Russia. In North Korea, it is believed that the deployment of soldiers to Russia for the war against Ukraine allegedly complies with international law. However, the fact of troop transfer is not explicitly confirmed there, states Kim Jong-gyu, vice foreign minister of the DPRK in charge of Russian affairs. According to Kim Jong-gyu, he drew attention to the rumors about the deployment of North Korean troops to Russia, which is recently drawing public attention in the world. He added that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of North Korea does not handle matters related to the Ministry of Defense and does not feel the need to confirm it separately. If there is such a thing that the world media is talking about, I think it will be an act conforming with the regulations of international law. There will evidently exist forces that want to describe it as illegal, I think, the official stated. Russian President Vladimir Putin, in his comments on this situation, claimed that such actions are allegedly stipulated in the Comprehensive Strategic Partnership Agreement with North Korea. The Israel Defense Forces attacked Iranian military sites, including air defense batteries and facilities involved in the production of ballistic missiles used in Iranian assaults on Israel on October 1 and April 14. Furthermore, the military stated that these strikes have granted the Israeli Air Force greater freedom of action in Iranian airspace and that they have a wide range of targets they can strike in future operations if necessary. The extent of the damage caused by the strikes will be assessed later, the Israel Defense Forces announced, adding that Iran has paid a price for its attacks on Israel. After the completion of Israeli strikes on Iran, Israel Defense Forces spokesman Rear Admiral Daniel Hagari warned in an English-language statement that if Iran makes a mistake and escalates further, Israel will respond. Iran claims that its air defense system successfully repelled Israeli attacks, although some facilities sustained limited damage. In a statement from Iran's air defense, it was reported that Israel targeted military sites in the provinces of Tehran, Khuzestan and Ilam. The Israel Defense Forces announced that it has completed overnight airstrikes targeting Iranian military facilities. The strikes conducted approximately 1,600 kilometers from Israel, involved dozens of aircraft, including fighter jets, refueling planes, and reconnaissance aircraft, reports the Times of Israel. All aircraft safely returned to Israel. The strikes were carried out in multiple waves over several hours across various regions of Iran. Yes,
Maybe ni. آسمان شهر تهران بعد از شلیک دوباره پدافند هوایی کاملا امن بدون هیچ آتش انفجار و یا دودی تصاویری که همکنون میبینید مرکز شهر تهران میدان بارستان ساختمون مجلس شورای اسلامی برج میلاد تهران از دور کاملا امن بدون هیچ دود و حادثه امروز شنبه پنجم آبان ساعت حدود پنج و خورده صبح Russia provided satellite data to the Yemeni Houthis for attacks on merchant ships in the Red Sea. The Wall Street Journal reported this, citing sources, particularly in Europe, defense ministries. Attacks on vessels including commercial ships in Middle Eastern waters by Houthi militants in Yemen have been ongoing since late last year. The Iran-backed group continues to assault what has been described as a major artery of global trade, further contributing to the destabilization of the region. The Houthis, which began their attacks late last year over the Gaza war, eventually began using Russian satellite data as they expanded their strikes, said a source familiar with the matter, along with two European defense officials to Western media. The Wall Street Journal also reported that the data was transmitted to the Yemeni Houthi fighters through members of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. One source from the American edition clarified that these Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps members were integrated into the Houthis in Yemen. Additionally, in September, Western media reported that Russia plans to transfer Yakont missiles to the Yemeni militants as well. Two regional officials briefed on the negotiations confirmed that the Houthis and Russians have met in Tehran at least twice this year. Talks regarding the supply of dozens of missiles with a range of about 300 kilometers are ongoing, with more meetings expected in Tehran in the coming weeks. Previously, Russia supplied Yakont missiles to Hezbollah, an organization backed by Iran. One source said that the negotiations began under Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi, who died in May in a helicopter crash. Russia is negotiating with the Houthis for the transfer of Yakont supersonic anti-ship missiles, said a Western intelligence source. The Iranians are brokering the talks, but do not want to have their signature over it. The Red Sea has become a battlefield for shippers since the Houthis began their campaign targeting ships traveling through the waterway, which once saw $1 trillion of cargo pass through it yearly. Houthis have targeted more than 80 merchant vessels with missiles and drones since the war in Gaza started in October 2023, triggered by the Hamas attack on Israel. In response to the Houthi attacks, a US-led coalition has carried out airstrikes in Yemen and Israel has attacked the port of Hodaida. The latter serves as a key location for the delivery of aid and commercial goods, which are critical as the country is reliant on imports.